Today, I'm going to be sharing with you, uh, and it's my subject, it's really a question. Are you limiting God in your life? And without a doubt, each one of us, in some way, would be limiting God. But it's all in different ways. A lot of times, we don't have knowledge. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And then other times, we know things, but we've let things slip from us. Actually, I read this just the other day in 2 Peter 1.12. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. Listen to this. Though you know them, and be established in the present truth. There's things that we know, and because we've heard them before, how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing. Some people think faith comes just by hearing. No, hearing and hearing and hearing. Faith comes. So you know truths, but until you act upon them, they, do, uh, they are not active in your life. You have to see what the Bible says, heed what it says, do what it says, and say what it says. See, too many times we come to the Lord and we're saying what we have. If you're ever going to change anything, You've got to say what he says. How can two walk together except they be agreed? And that's talking about with the Lord. How can you walk with the Lord and receive from the Lord fully what you need to receive unless you're open and you're walking in agreement with him? Now, young people, I know I'm talking to more than young people, but I knew this morning that I'm talking to young people as well. So don't you feel like, well, I'm young, that really doesn't fit where I am. No, it does fit where you are. And if you learn it now and you begin to walk in the truths of God's Word, it will change your world and you can turn your world upside down. You can turn your world upside down. Isn't that what the Bible said about those people that walked with the Lord and were doing amazing feats for the Lord Jesus Christ because He had endued them with power? Many of you, you've been endued with that power. And we don't need to be living the ordinary life. We don't need to be living the life as everyone else because we're a peculiar people. You said, I knew that all along. So-and-so over here, they're very peculiar. No, you're peculiar too. We all are. We're God's people. Well, I don't want to stand out. Well, I don't know how to tell you, but if you've got the light of Jesus in you, you're going to stand out. Because you're not going to talk like other people. You're not going to walk like other people. And you're not going to do what other people do. Well, I just want to blend in. Young people, you don't blend in. You be the one that is the standard bearer for Jesus Christ. You lift up the light of the Lord. You lift up the word of the Lord. And don't fit in with other people the way that... See, that's a lie. They want to homogenize everybody, blend us in together, indoctrinate us, and make us in the image of... Of men. No. God wants you to be in His image. That's why you were made. You were made in His image. He wants you to get this book in you. And He wants you to be a people to Him. People set apart for the Lord. And see, I used to hear that. And I was one of the most compromising Christians as a young person. I was compromising until one day I began to see myself in the pages of this book. And I tell you what, all that straddling the fence, all that half living for God, all of that went away. And it's like, you know what? 
I don't care what people think about me. Now, I want to act like I have a brain, and I want to use wisdom, and you should too. But I'm going to tell you, you are peculiar. God's Word is His way, not the ways of the world. And so we're going to be a people that is different. Amen? So when you hear these things this morning, you may know them. But that doesn't mean that you really know them. That doesn't mean that you're acting on it, that you're walking in it, that you're speaking it and living it out in your life. That doesn't mean that. So you need to have ears to hear. And that's what, you know, my prayer is for the people that come to this church that Eddie and I minister to and pastor. So is there something restricting you from receiving God's covenant? that He's made with you. Now see, you have to think about that. I don't care if there's something in my life that I never received, even though I saw it in there and I never received. I'm not going to stop believing. And see, so many of God's people, they'll stop believing when they have a difficulty in their life. I'm going to tell you, if Eddie and I had stopped when there was difficulty, we would never have done anything for God. And it's the same with you. Well, I ran into, you know, some persecution. And I ran into hard times. And this is happening to me and that's happening. And Lord knows that's intensifying in these last days. And we all know that, right? Some people think, well, if I come to Jesus, all that's over. No, if somebody told you that or led you to believe that, that's wrong. Because you are going to go through things in this life. But God has promised that you always triumph in Christ Jesus. Not in yourself, not in your willpower, not in your determination, but in your submission to Him and His Word. Things go on in our life. And if every time it goes on, we let it pull us away from the Lord it's, that's not right. Well, this happened to me and that happened to me and I know tragic things happen to everyone and it's terrible things that happen in the lives of individuals. I know it and, and I have great compassion. And you know what else? God has great compassion for that. But He has given something called faith on the inside of you. <coughs> to help you stand during the difficult times. People making fun of you. People persecuting you for your faith. People doing things to harm you and hurt you. And I'm going to tell you, use the Bible to win your battle. The battle, God will help you with the battle. You can hold on to your faith during the battle. During the difficulty, you can hold on to your faith. Can you say a big amen? amen? Praise the Lord. Now, when I ask you the question, is there something restricting you and receiving from your God-given covenant that the Lord has made for you? Really, there's four things that uh, I want to mention. I probably won't get to all of them this morning, but that's okay. And, uh, you know, we're uh, a multidimensional a, a person. We just don't have this spiritual side and that's it. We have a spiritual side and that's the most important part of our life that we get that part right. But then also there is emotional well-being. You say, well, Jesus doesn't really care about that. Is that right? Is that why Jesus preached Luke 4? What He came to do? To heal the brokenhearted? Yeah, He does care about that too. And the day that we live in, there's more emotional trauma than any time I believe in my lifetime I've ever seen. So God cares about that and you have a covenant. So don't restrict Him in that area. Then the other thing is um, He wants to provide for your needs. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not a preacher that wants to, you know, just blessing, blessing, blessing. 
and no responsibility as a Christian, no dealing with sin and repentance. No, I'm going to do that, but I am not going to leave outside God's provision for you uh, in your life as it results about uh, as it results to your well-being uh, as far as financially goes. God cares about you having a house. He cares about you having that vehicle. He cares about your children having the right kind of education. He cares about all those things. So, you know, that's another thing that the, through your covenant that's been provided that the devil fights so hard. And then, um, uh, as far as your covenant goes, there's a covenant promised to you for health and healing. And again, I may not get into all these, but I want to mention it right now before you as we're starting out. So it's basically those four areas. But you know, you can limit God. You can limit God in so many ways. So I'm not trying to give you an inclusive list. I'm trying to uh, stir your mind up that you begin to think, where are you living below your covenant with God? And that covenant is real. When you came to Jesus Christ and you made Him the Lord of your life, He believed it. And I hope you did. He believed it and he entered into a covenant, a blood covenant. He shed his blood for our sin. See, people don't want us talking about the blood. I'm talking about the blood. I don't care if it offends everybody. It's the blood of the Lamb that has redeemed us and there's not one other thing that can get us into the kingdom of God. And I'm not ashamed of it. We need to be singing about it. We need to talk about it. Well, they'll just think I'm crazy. Well, they already do anyway, so what does it matter, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, when we talk about uh, a limitation in our life as it relates to this covenant that God gave us, I want you to think about restraint or restriction or that there's a ceiling um, you know, a lot of people, you know, they'll talk about a ceiling maybe in their employment opportunities or they'll talk about a ceiling as it relates uh, to their spiritual. You know, there is no ceiling in God. Now, I'm not here to tell you that God's going to, you know, take you to the moon and you're going to be an astronaut. I don't know what you're going to be and that's between you and God. But there's some things that people do that are ridiculous. I'm not talking about any of that. But God comes and He puts desires in your heart and He puts a dream in your heart. And He, if it's from Him, He will help you. He will help you with that. He didn't come to frustrate you. He came to fulfill that desire that He placed in your heart. Some of you, and again, young people, there are things that you're supposed to do for the Lord. Don't let the world restrict and restrain you. Well, you're not smart enough. Well, that's not true. Because you have God living on the inside of you. You have knowledge, understanding, discernment, and good judgment dwelling on the inside of you. And you can draw on that. It's for you. So some people, you know, they get this ceiling and, and you, can't, you can't do anything. I, I heard uh, Pat Summit, I, I read a book that she wrote, and she talked about that ceiling, the glass ceiling. And she said, you know, when things happened and that glass ceiling would seem to be there as a woman coach, she just took her high heel and pushed through that glass ceiling. And, and you know, that's what we need to do. We need to take our spiritual heel and bust through those glass ceilings. You know, if you think that everybody is going to give you the opportunity, some people in life will help you. You know, your mentors and your spiritual leaders, they will help you attain. I'm not just talking about ministry. I'm talking about life. They will encourage you and they will help you. But then there's other people who are jealous and competitive and they're not going to help you. So if you're looking to the left and right and all these people to help you, they might not do it, but there are people in the body of Christ that can help you attain your dreams. Some of you, you know, God has called you to be a great business man or woman. 
You say, you mean God would do that? I mean He would do it. He wants to use you for His honor and glory in the place where you are. You say, well, I went bankrupt. How many millionaires have went bankrupt? Just about so many that I, you know, many, many that I know that was first what happened to them, but they wouldn't let that ceiling keep them away from what God had for them. And I'm speaking to some people here. You, you know, you may have grown up you may have grown up a life and in a home where there was nothing but, you know, hopelessness, poverty, lack of all kinds. And so now you've taken on that same mindset. But you know, that's not what God said. He said, let this mind be in you. You know what that means? You have to allow it. You have to allow His mind to get in you. Oh, well, I know that. Yeah, you know it so much that you don't even hear it anymore. You, you need to be what Peter said. I know you know it, but you need to listen to it again. You need to be stirred up in remembrance of it. Amen? Amen. All right. So we get restricted and restrained, and we are stopped. Now listen to this, Psalm 78, 41. Yes, this is what happened. They turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. This is what happened to the Israelites, and God had brought them out and done marvelous things in their sight. He had caused the Red Sea to congeal on both sides and they went across on dry land. They tempted God and limited Him, restricted Him, restrained Him. They put the glass ceiling, oh, I can just do this and no more. You know, I've never believed that. Since I got filled with the Holy Spirit, I have never believed that I cannot do what the Word of God says and what God places in my heart. And I'm not talking about an arrogance because I know that I can't do it on my own, but I can be a partner with Him and I can do it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Some of you, you're in this room. You feel like your life is going nowhere. You feel like you're not really doing much of anything for the Lord. Well, you can turn that around. And you know, what? Uh, you say, I'm older. What can I do? You can trust God. You can believe His covenant. Sure, you may not be doing what you were doing years ago when you were younger, but just because you get some age, does that mean that Jesus checked out of you? No. He said, I come to live in you and dwell in you, and I'll never leave you and abandon you. In your old age, God will never leave you. He will never abandon you. It would be remarkable if all the children of God, all of us, and I put myself in that, if all of us would live up to the potential that God has for us. It would be absolutely astounding what could happen. Dare to take God as His Word, to see His covenant, and to walk in it. Powerful, powerful thing. But anyway, now listen to this, Psalm 78, 19. Can God? Now that right there tells you something. That's a wrong thing to say to the Father. Can God do this? Can God use me when I'm elderly? Can God provide for me when I'm broke? Can God? Well, yes, He can. But it's going to take faith in your heart to reach out, see what He said, and lay hold of it. That's why you need to read the Bible yourself. It's great that you get 
wonderful messages. That's wonderful. And we need those to be built up and edified and inspired and have the information and grow in knowledge. We need that. But I'm going to tell you, if that's all you do once a week is hear the Word of God one time, you've got to get this in you. Say, I've got to get the Word of God inside me to change my mind. See, your mind is a problem many, many times. Or it can be a great benefit and a great way that God enables you to receive from Him. If you've been in, like I was talking about a minute ago, this poverty mentality, I never have anything, I can't do this, I can't do that, you're always restricted and restrained, you need to change your mind. You need to change your mind because if you can change your mind, you say, oh, you know, Christian science. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Bible over circumstances. The Bible over your circumstances and my circumstances. I don't care what the devil said. He comes and lies all the time. And I've told you what I do. I mean, I'll be driving down the road and the devil will drop some idiotic thought in me that I know that's contrary. And I, no devil, I'm not receiving that. What does the Bible say? I replace that thought with what Scripture says. Be transformed. Be changed into a different person. How? By renewing your mind. So here we are, those children of Israel in the wilderness, and God's doing marvelous things. Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? How could you ask Him that? You know, if you, you put yourself in that position, but I can see, you know, you can get all down and, you know, down in the mouth, down in your faith. Can God furnish a table? Did he part the Red Sea? I tell you, that's the thing we need to do so much of the time is remind ourselves of what God has already done for us. We need to remind ourselves of what he's done in our life. There's so many times I, I look at things in my own life, in our life, and I see God doing amazing things in the past. And maybe right now things are not going so good and I see a lot of problems and I see a lot of issues. When you pastor, you have problems and you have issues. Can you imagine? I know you don't think that's true. They're more than you think. They're more than you think. But you better get a way to deal with them. You better get a way. And see, we hear, you know, in this end time that we live in, how many pastors have just given it up because society has changed so much. People don't want to hear the preaching of the Word. They don't want to hear the full counsel of God. If you tell them you don't need to be shacked up with somebody, you need to be married, you don't need to commit sin, of all different kinds, if you tell them that, why they get mad at you? Well, we can't talk about that in our church. If you can't talk about the Bible in your church, then there are some major issues. And not only should we be teaching it from the pulpit, you need to be receiving it. I need to be receiving it. When I get corrected, I want to receive it. Well, not me, bless God. I'm spiritual. You're headed for a downfall. You're headed for a downfall when you get too proud to be corrected by God's Word. Now, why am I saying all that? Well, these people here, they were questioning God. And God, what did He do? He hit the rock. Who ever heard of hitting a rock and water coming out? It's supernatural. If God has to do supernatural things for you and me, He'll do them. He'll do them. Amen? Amen? And he had angel food provided for him. Isn't that something? Then they started griping about angel food. I'm so tired of this angel's food. We want meat. And then he rained it down on them. I mean, he gave it to them. 
But he got upset with them. He got upset. Well, God would never get upset. He's love. God is love. Oh, he loves me. Let me tell you something. It's coming. He does love you. He loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son that you could not go to hell, but go to heaven to be with him. He gave that great sacrifice and the suffering through the Lord Jesus Christ. He did that for you. That's how much He loves you. But if you think that you can live like the devil and get God's covenant blessings and promises, you are mistaken. And I hope this morning that bubble gets busted because that's trouble for you. That's dangerous for you. I tell you, there's something in me since I was a kid, because I'm sure, you know, I'm learning it as I grew up in church and in Sunday school and all those places. I feared God. Does that mean I'm trembling and I think He's going to hurt me? No. It means I love Him and I respect Him. And I know the side of God that is there and he gets displeased with me when I do things that grieve him. I know that, and I understand that. So what I want to present to you today is balance in that. Not that you're not, but I hope you are. But I'm sure there's some people that, you know, they hear love, 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 love so much that they don't understand that you can displease the Lord. And at that point in time, the door is open for the enemy to come in. You say, that's God. You know, he's mad at me. No. The whole time that we do that and we get into things that we shouldn't and open the door to the devil, let me tell you what Jesus does. He stands at the door of his house. And he's watching down the road and he's looking for the prodigal. He didn't say, I don't love you anymore. I'm mad at you. No, he's saying, come back. Come back. And you know what? He'll do that until you leave this world or till he comes back. But if he comes back and you're not ready, that wasn't his choice, was it? It's our own choice. Now, I'm not indicating here today that you can be in, out, in, out. But I do think that you can live in a way where you think that God loves you so much, you're so cute, you're so wonderful, that God could never see anything in you, but that is not true. This happened to me the other day. I was in a place of business and there was a lady with her little girl, that little girl, like four or five, something like that. And I noticed that she was really talking back to her mother at that young age, you know. And the mother, how the mother was doing, instead of, you know, trying to uh, direct her in the right way, oh, honey, you're so sweet. And it's like, you need to jerk her up right now. You need to take her outside, and you need to deal with that. You know it's true if you have children. You know it's true. If you let your kids get by with everything, they're spoiled brats. And one of the, one of the translations of this scripture, listen to this. Listen to it. It says that they were acting like whining and acting like spoiled children. This was God's people. So you think that adults don't act like the whiny babies? No, we do. And we can. But you, you don't need to be doing that. And just like that lady, I, I know she probably didn't want to create a spectacle in the business that we're in. I got that. But to let her talk to the, her mother, no respect, no honor, no, we don't need to do that. And see, that's, that's, what these, that's what the children of Israel were doing. They were whining like spoiled children. And God said, I've had it with this group. 
They need to repent. And listen to this. Verse 22 of that same chapter, Psalm 78. Because they believed not God <coughs> and trusted not in His salvation or in His deliverance or His ability to rescue, they believed not His wondrous works. You know, all the time, God wants to do wondrous works in our life. But many times... We're, we're saying, can you furnish a table for me, God? Can you provide my rent? Can you provide a vehicle for me, Lord? Can you help me because I'm despondent and down right now? Can you help me? Can you do that, God? Can God? Yes, God can. Say, God can. God can. Yes, He can. And that's how we need to look at Him. Even though we, uh, there, there are times have been in my life, I don't feel like God can. I don't, I don't sense God doing anything. But I have to remind myself, just like you or anyone else, God can. God can. The ceiling that is here. This restraint and restriction that is here. If I'm out of the will of my Father, Lord, help me to get back in. Help me to get back in. It's not hard to get back in with Him and be in faith. You can be in faith. Amen? So it's very important. And you know, I, I told you I wouldn't have time to do this, and I knew that's why I presented those four points earlier. You know, that when you, you're talking about the covenant that we need to consider, even though there's so much more in the covenant of God, we need to, we need to consider His forgiveness into our own life. Sometimes we can't forgive ourselves, but we need through Jesus Christ to allow His forgiveness to penetrate. When things have been so ugly and so bad in our life, we need to allow that penetrating power of God's Spirit into our life and let that forgiveness... I tell you what, so many people are walking around bitter and they lash out and they're unkind. And you know why? Because they're holding unforgiveness in their hearts toward themselves. And God said, I forgive you. I release you. I let you go. He said, what you did is going to never be remembered as far as the east is from the west. Never to touch again. Never to touch again. So if he doesn't remember it, don't let the devil beat you over the head with those things. No, no, I'm forgiven. I'm cleansed. Do the talk back. I'm forgiven and I'm cleansed. Love people and allow God to love you. I know sometimes you grow up and, and people, you know, parents or loved ones mistreated or supposedly loved ones mistreated you and there's so much damage that has been done. But I believe that God can take the damage of a broken life and He can turn it around. But you've got to allow Him to. So, you know, there are limitations there that we put in our own life. And sometimes we tell ourselves lies. We don't admit what's going on and so we can never get free from it. But we just keep this restraint up here where God can't get through, penetrate, heal us, deliver us, rescue us. Can God? Yes, He can. Yes, He can. And not only can He, He wants to. But you've got to release things to Him. Amen? And so that's so important that we really believe that. Just, I'm just going to say this very quickly. We don't have time to look into the Scripture about it. But the Bible says in Galatians 3 that Christ has redeemed or rescued us 
out of darkness, doesn't it? He rescued us. How did He rescue us? By dying on the cross. He took your curse, the Bible says. Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree or is crucified. That's what. And so Jesus said, I came to redeem you from a life of cursing. You say, well, I feel like I'm living under a curse. Well, that needs to change today. Because in the Word of God in Galatians 3, it says that He redeemed you. Say this, He redeemed me from the curse of the law. And then you know what He did? He brought Abraham's blessing in the next verse. Abraham's blessing on your life. Well, Abraham's in the Old Testament. Well, if he mentioned it in Galatians, I guess he meant it. People just try to explain the Word of God away. Not me. I'm laying hold of it and I'm believing it and I would encourage you to do the same thing. So He redeemed us from the curse. And if you turn over, and I want you this week, I want you to think about this. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. And then I want you to consider what the curse was. And you can find it in Deuteronomy 28 and it's too, too much for me to turn to right now because I'm going to have to close. But the curse there is sickness, disease, poverty. But you know what the main one is? Sin, no forgiveness, hell. And He redeemed us from that. He hung on that cross to redeem us from that curse. You say, well, you know, that's just what it says in the Bible. Exactly. And I just believe it. How about you? Do you just believe it? It's a powerful belief to receive what God did for you. And you know, I know people came forward here this morning, lots of needs, but there's people who didn't come forward, and you've got lots of needs. You need to allow the Holy Spirit of the living God to make this covenant real in your heart and life. I'm going to ask everybody to just stay still right now. Don't move around and that kind of thing. As we are going to end this, and I'm praying for people. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, your precious holy ones that are in this room and even people that maybe don't know you. You have such a much better plan for their lives. And Father, this plan doesn't mean that there's no difficulty, no challenges, but it does mean your plan is a better plan. We can come up and conjure up something in our own heart. Well, this is what I want to do, and that's what I want to do. But the Holy Spirit is speaking today in this place, and there's things He wants to do in your life. Open your heart to receive that. Open your heart to receive covenant blessings and provision in all these areas that we've talked about and then so much more. Lord, these things may be new to many people that are in this room, I don't know. But I pray that you, you impress them, indelible impression on our hearts and our lives and our, even our minds, Lord, that we become the image that we see in the Bible. Help us to look into this mirror of the Word of God and begin to see ourselves. Lord, many have told us, we can't do this, we can't do that. You'll never accomplish anything. Don't look into that mirror. You take your spiritual foot and you break that and you get it away from you. And you take the mirror of God's Word that we've talked about this morning and that you're going to read about this week and you're going to hear more and more about these things. You take that and you let God begin to shape your life. Shape and mold. 
Lord, many of us have been molded by the educational system. We've been molded by parents that didn't know how to raise children. We've been molded through pain and hurt and divorce and death. We've been molded. But Lord, we bring ourselves. I want you to just see this now in your own heart. We bring our life and we lay it down at your feet. We bring it. And Lord, we rise up, not in defeat, but we rise up in knowing that you care about us, that you love us, that you have a good plan for us, and we're going to be able to walk in that plan because you said we could. Man may say we can't, but you say we can. And so God, as we look at you this morning, we're not going to ask the question, can God do that? We say, God can. Can you say that with me? Say, God can. Amen. Let's give Him praise this morning. Hallelujah.